Hey, how's it going? Parker Welbeck here with FullTimeFilmmaker.com and today we are taking a look at the brand new DJI Ronin SC. DJI was kind enough to send us out this new gimbal to test out and review, but just like always, this review is completely unbiased. I am not being paid by DJI to do this review. Now, at first glance, this gimbal looks almost identical to its big brother, the Ronin S. Basically, it's just a lot smaller and a lot lighter to accommodate some of the newer, smaller mirrorless cameras, but they did also pack this gimbal full of a ton of new features that we honestly didn't expect. So in this video, I'll be going over some of those features to help you decide if this is a good fit for you and your current setup and how it compares to the original Ronin S. Now, as far as design goes, this gimbal was built for smaller mirrorless cameras like the Canon EOS R, the Sony A7 series, the Nikon Z series, and so on. So keep that in mind before picking one of these up because the max payload capacity for the Ronin SC is two kilograms or 4.5 pounds, whereas the Ronin S is almost double at 3.6 kilograms or eight pounds. And a few minor cons that I want to get out of the way have to do with this smaller form factor. If you plan on sticking with a small mirrorless camera as well as relatively small lenses, you should have no problem using this gimbal. But while testing, I noticed that a majority of my lenses wouldn't actually be able to work with this setup simply because they cause my camera setup to be too front heavy, making it a lot more difficult to balance. So I think that some people may end up outgrowing this system pretty quickly. And in that case, the larger Ronin S may be a better option. As for the overall design and build quality on the Ronin S, it's nearly identical to the Ronin S, but we do see a bit more plastic being used, probably just to make it lighter, but it still feels high quality and sturdy like the Ronin S, so there's really not much drawback there. And the SC comes in weighing at only 2.4 pounds compared to 4.7 pounds on the S, so about half as light. When filming with the 1DX on the Ronin S, my arms usually get exhausted after a full day of filming, but I was pleasantly surprised with how light this feels. It almost feels like a toy in my hand compared to this guy and just makes filming all day long a lot easier. So that was kind of the main purpose, I think, for them making the smaller version is allowing people maybe who aren't as strong or who don't want to have to carry that much weight around all day, giving them a smaller, lighter option. And so they definitely succeeded at that, making this much lighter. As far as battery life goes, the SC has 11 hour battery life versus 12 hour battery life on the S. So not much of a drawback there. Something new though, that the Ronin S doesn't have that we saw with the Zoom Crane 3 are the mechanical locks that allow you to lock in every individual arm, which makes it really nice for traveling and also makes it easier to balance each arm individually. So I'm super glad they added that great new feature. Also, they gave us a new and smaller quick release plate. It's not a standard Manfrotto plate like on the Ronin S, so that's kind of a bummer as you can't switch out between your gimbal and tripod very quickly. But the new plate is smaller and lighter and comes with a positioning block that you can tighten in place so you can mark the position of your release plate and more quickly mount your camera because you don't have to fidget with the positioning. Now, as for the performance and stability, the Ronin SC feels and functions just like the Ronin S, but just smaller and lighter. Sometimes with cheaper, smaller gimbals, the motors aren't gonna be as powerful and therefore don't yield as smooth of results, but we found the Ronin SC to give us almost the same level of smoothness as his older brother. Generally though, having an overall lighter setup will mean that walking or running movements will show up more easily in your footage, and that is still the case with the Ronin SC, so just something to be aware of there. Also, we mentioned earlier that DJI includes several software updates that really set this gimbal apart, and we're we're gonna go over a few of those right now and show you some sample footage from each of these features. The first feature is Active Track. This is the newest and possibly our favorite feature that DJI has included in the Ronin SC is Active Track 3.0. Just like we've seen in DJI's newest drones like the Mavic Pro 2, this technology is now available for your gimbal. I'm always a little bit leery of these auto features and usually don't recommend them, and I'd still be careful to trust an auto tracking system in every situation, but I was actually amazed at how well this one performed. Included in the box is a phone mount with a hot shoe connection so you can attach your phone to the top of the camera, launch the Ronin app, hit create, and then active track. And by using the camera on your phone, you can actually select any object in the frame and your gimbal will keep it directly in the center. So you don't have to worry about the subject getting cut off. And you can also move the joystick and place your subject in a specific part of the frame and it will remember your selection and keep it there. So you can also do a rule of thirds framing as well as a center framing. We tested this feature out in a few different scenarios and it honestly worked very well. So I could could actually see myself using this professional in certain situations, but as we'll show in a future test, I still think that learning how to manually steer your gimbal is going to be a better, more professional look than using these auto features. Another new feature from DJI that we explored also involved your cell phone, which basically turns it into a wireless gyroscope remote control for your gimbal. It's very similar to FreeFly Movie's Mimic system, except this doesn't broadcast the image on the phone, so you have to be right behind the camera to be able to see what you're filming. So it's a cool idea, but not completely useful 
people. And the way that you access this mode is you go into your Ronin app, select create, and then force mobile, and then turn it on, and the Ronin SC will automatically start mimicking the movements that you're making with your phone. If you're a one-man show, this probably won't be super useful to you, but for a small team shooting a video that involves complicated camera movements, this feature could come in handy. It worked pretty well when I was walking behind the camera, but when I tried using it out of a car, it was too hard to use because I couldn't rotate my entire body while sitting in the car, so I can't really picture myself using this feature a whole lot. Maybe if I could see the image from my phone, but still a cool little feature they've included that some people might find useful. The next cool feature is called FPV mode, which basically gives you a POV mode where you can move the gimbal in virtually any direction and get a more intimate look to your shots. This kind of mimics the moves that you'd see from an FPV drone, so it's also a fun little feature to have as well. And to set that up, all you have to do is launch the Ronin app, hit user profile, choose which profile you want to change, and then tap FPV. Also something to be aware of is that DJI changed the app layout. I imagine it'll be updated with both Ronins, but I'm not for sure. But in this new app, there's certain settings that we couldn't find, like motor strength settings. And so we found it a little bit harder to dial in the exact motor settings that we wanted. So whether it's just a beta version of the app or if they're going to improve upon it, I don't know. But we did feel like we had less overall control with the new app. But after getting it all balanced and fine tuning the settings in the app, here's a few tests we ran to show you how this gimbal performs in some common shooting scenarios. First is just your standard lock mode where the camera stays perfectly straight looking in one direction and we hold down the front trigger to lock it in and just like the Ronin S, this performed super smooth. Not much difference there. Then next we went on to a running test where I ran directly behind a subject as fast as I could and overall it did perform well. I would say not quite as good as the Ronin S, mostly because it's a lighter setup so it's going to be more susceptible to some of those up and down movements of running but it still did a pretty good job. And the next up was the low mode or underslung mode and just like the Ronin S, all you have to do is hold the trigger and then sling your camera under until it gets into the low mode. And again, I'd say this did just as well as the Ronin S. Next, we tried out the parallax shot. This is where we orbit around a subject. And again, I thought this was super smooth, although this does take some motor setting adjustments and a bit of practice to get it down perfectly. But if you aren't very practiced, you can now use that active track 3.0 like we showed you earlier and literally turn the handle in any direction you want and it will always keep your subject in the center. So again, this is probably the biggest standout feature of this new gimbal is that it makes it super beginner friendly to have that active track in there. Either way though, I thought the SC did just as good of a job doing the parallax as the Ronin S. I did notice though when using the active track 3.0, if a subject is moving too fast, like a passing car, it's a little bit too slow to track. So as long as the subject isn't moving too fast, it should do a pretty good job in the automatic tracking mode. Moving on to our last test was the sports mode. Although this feature is more common among three axis gimbals today, I think the Ronin S is still the best at the sports mode. And I thought the Ronin SC would work just as well in sports mode and it almost did, but we tried all kinds of different settings and couldn't quite get it as good as the Ronin S. As you can see by this example, it does a great job. It was just a little bit harder to control. And to activate sports mode, you can hold down the M button until the indicator light turns yellow or press and hold the M button and then double tap the front trigger to lock it in place. So there you have a quick look at the all new Ronin SC. My overall thoughts, I think it's a great new gimbal that I would highly recommend to anyone with a smaller setup. But again, the biggest con is simply that it can't hold as much weight, which means I personally wouldn't have much use for it because I don't own very many setups that are this small. I even recently picked up a Canon EOS R that only weighs about a pound and a half and with a lens that weighs about a pound and a half as well, which is under the weight capacity limit of 4.5 pounds. It was super front heavy, so you have to slide the camera all the way to the back, which bumps it into the back motor, which will ruin your footage. So just be aware that even though it says a capacity of 4.5 pounds, you have to factor in the form factor of your setup as well and the weight distribution in order to fit it in the space provided. So the only setup that I own that I was able to fit on here was the Sony a7 III with a Tamron 28 to 75, which comes in at about two pounds total. And even then I had to take off the eyepiece so that it wouldn't bump into the back motor. So if you had like a G Master lens on here, I doubt that it would balance. So just something to be aware of that with your setup, both camera and lens need to be super light. Otherwise you're going to want to get the larger Ronin S. As for price, the Ronin SC comes in as expected, just under the Ronin S starting at $450. So you'll also save some cash by going with the smaller version as well. But that's it for my thoughts, guys. Links are in the description on where you can pick either of these up. And if you'd like to see more gear reviews and comparisons like this, along with tutorials on my favorite Ronin S settings, as well as other tutorials for how to become a master at achieving cinematic shots and how to run your own video production business, you can join our online film school at fulltimefilmmaker.com. Or to see a preview of what the course is like, you can sign up for my free one hour filmmaking training by clicking over here. But that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helps you make an educated decision on which of these tools is right for you. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any further questions, please let me know.